This is New Cap News with Nicole Stilger. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Two local schools were forced to shut down today because of a threat concerning the safety of staff and students at Holy Rosary High School. The high school as well as St. Thomas School were closed prior to the school day as a precaution while the RCMP investigated the nature of the threat. No new details have been released and the investigation is ongoing. Police are working closely with the Lloydminster Catholic School Division. In a statement released earlier today, Mayor Gerald Albers thanked the school board and first responders saying we commend the Lloydminster Catholic School Division and the Lloydminster RCMP for their prompt and decisive actions and ensuring the safety of students and staff. Police say there is no threat to the public. Well, closer to home, it's the largest annual training exercise for the Canadian Army and the culminating event for the Army's high readiness forces. In this case, the 2nd Canadian Mechanized Brigade Group out of Petawawa, Ontario, also known as Task Force Tomahawk. Maple Resolve is preparing them for battle. The exercise is a full spectrum type operation where the troops go into different types of combat scenarios in both an offensive and defensive nature in a simulated environment that also has civilian players. Basically, it gets to as much realism as possible. By going through this exercise, it will then certify at the end of it those high readiness forces that the Canadian government will be able to tell the military they want to use to be able to deploy anywhere over the course of the next year where the government may want it to, uh, to send them. <laughs> Maple Resolve involves about 5,000 participants, including soldiers from the U.S. Army, British Army, Australian Army and New Zealand Defence Force, the event proving to be a very effective learning environment. It's a great opportunity, uh, whether you're on the, the Blue Force, the Good Guy side or the, uh, the Op 4, uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, go out, uh, apply doctrine, integrate with our, our allies, uh, understand where the friction points are uh, and understand how we, we operate similar but sometimes in different ways. Uh, so it's the integration piece uh, that we have to go through uh, to, I guess, come together as a group and provide a, a realistic effect on the battlefield. We will have a more in-depth look at Exercise Maple Resolve next week on NewCap News. Devin Sagan passed away four years ago and ever since his father Eugene has been raising money for charity in his name. Now with the fourth annual Devin Sagan Memorial coming up, Eugene is adding another element to this year's fundraising. He's making what's called the Burger King Run where he'll ride his motorcycle from Lloyd to a Burger King on the coast of PEI and back again. People buy time slots of when he will return and the person with the right time gets 50% of the money raised while the rest goes to local families with sick children. Children. Eugene says the inspiration comes from a fond memory he shared with his son. When Devin was alive, him and his best friend were talking about taking a bike trip out to the East Coast. And uh, they wanted to take a month and a half off work. They worked for me at the time. And I said, to go there and back? I said, I can do that in six days. The main message of the foundation is to create a positive out of a negative and to celebrate the life of those still with us and the people we've lost. After the ride, the fourth annual Devon Sagan Memorial will take place at the Sagan's Ranch on June 24th. Well, you could say the May long weekend is the kickoff to the summer season. Many people are, of course, heading out with their tents and trailers to take advantage of the great outdoors. Brittany Matika has more on how Sandy Beach is preparing. Sandy Beach Regional Park is ready to go for the camping season and is looking forward to a busy long weekend. We are excited about this year. It looks like we're going to have a very busy season. A lot of the people um, that are coming to camp with us this year have never been here before. They've traveled further away and I guess because of the economy they seem to be staying close to home which we're really happy about. The park has had a few upgrades for visitors. We have a brand new boat launch that was installed over the winter and it's pretty impressive. Uh, we've added two new pieces of playground equipment last fall. Uh, so we have a pretty nice playground now. And we're really excited about the golf course. That's, that's big. They did a whole new uh, revamp to the golf course and they put in grass greens and ready. three new tee off boxes at each hole. They uh, altered some of the hole locations. I suspect it wouldn't be ready to play till the end of August, early September, if the grow-in goes all well. They put in a whole new irrigation system. It's state-of-the-art irrigation, and uh, the fairways and, and uh, course should be in great shape. Sandy Beach is fully booked for camping this weekend, but day passes are still available to enjoy the park. Brittany Matika, New Cap News.
And like we said, May long weekend is here and with the weather expected to be somewhat sunny, here's our Heather Clagus with some ideas to keep you busy. The long weekend is upon us. Summer is unofficially here and you can wrap up your long weekend Monday night in Lashburn when Scott Woods makes his return to the community hall. It's a new show, the Twin Fiddle Express, and he's bringing along his sister and they're both going to be playing the fiddle. Plus, he's got a few tricks that he likes to throw in as well. A great family show. You can still get your tickets for this Monday night in Lashburn. The Playground Project in Kitscotty is going to get a huge boost coming up next Friday night when the Dirt Rich Band hosts their album release party at the Community Hall in Kitscotty. You've got a chance to pick up a copy of their CD and see some great live music, including Michaela Cooper and Aces Wild, along with the Dirt Rich Band. You can pick up your tickets at Tunes Music and Audio in Lloydminster. We want you to be able to crank up some new tunes for the long weekend, so you've got a chance to win a copy of Chris Stapleton's new album, From a Room. This album, the number one country album on the charts right now, and you can win yourself a copy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And now is the time for you to register for the Color Within Run coming up next Saturday. It's in support of the Bee Fisher Centre. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegus, and that's what's happening. Ag producers will make a push this weekend to catch up with the seeding season and trusting that Mother Nature will pitch in. But in the haste, one stakeholder is reminding everyone to keep safety in the forefront. It's very important that if you're working long hours, just don't take shortcuts It's it's uh, and, and, and be mindful. Bill Gale is the chair of Sask Weed and is seeding about 4,000 acres with his brother and the extended family. As a grain producer, he knows firsthand the urgency at this time and the pain when facing the unguarded moment. I've lost some close friends to farm accidents, so this hits home to me very, very much. So uh, uh, take the extra time. Uh, it's still early days. Gail will be in his field this weekend just north of Regina. This is New Cap Sports. Barron's spring football camp entered week two Monday, and among the many future Barron's players in attendance, one stood out. Lance Phillips with the story. Now that outdoor practices have begun, the public has the opportunity to come by and watch future Barons show they have the talent to play high school ball. Of the 50 or so boys at this year's spring camp, there was one notable player on the field. Notable not only because of her skills, but also because her presence isn't just to get exercise. Uh, I'm hoping to go for a receiver position maybe, because pretty good at catching and I'm pretty decent at running so she did v very well I think and I think Jillian will do very well and if she tries and just shows what she can do and sticks with it I think she'll be very successful with her football ah, I think it's awesome I think it's great when you know anybody wants to play football and wants to give it their best shot I think I, I really hope she sticks it out and um, yeah we'll make we'll be uh, as uh, accommodating to her as, as possible um, she seems like a hard worker I, I haven't really had a chance to sit down and chat with her but um, yeah no we're excited MacArthur's not a first-timer with body contact. The grade 9 athlete is an avid rugby player, a sport that translates well to the football field. Yeah, that'll be nice. Some of those guys will get checked in pretty quick. Uh, it helps me with speed. It helps me with uh, the determination part and being able to understand plays more and well, get to the ball and get the ball over the line. Even though the Bishop Lloyd student has the skills to compete, She's very aware of the determination required to make a football team as a female. Because you're playing with a bunch of guys and they know what they're doing and I, really, I don't really. So you got to make sure you, you know what you're doing so you don't get criticized very much. Tuesday, the hopeful strap pads on for the first time. And after the boys feel the pop of MacArthur's hits, the expectation is any criticism will be quickly erased. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloyd Minster. And that is your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau has your weather details next. Stay with us.
At Truly Amish, pick the wood, stain, and upholstery to create the furniture that is sure to complement your home. Completely customizable options to suit your unique taste. Welcome back, everyone. So overall, it's looking like one of the better May long holiday weekends that we've had in quite some time there. And to sum it all up, maybe 30, maybe 40 maybe 60% chance that we see maybe 5, maybe 10 millimeters and divvy it up right across the region. Some of the stronger areas too, especially if you look at what happened in Cold Lake in the last hour there. If one of those thunderstorms rumbles on through, then that's just luck of the draw at this point there. This is the front that's pushing on through and you see basically a lot of clearer areas become available on the back end of it and then it fills in again later on tomorrow afternoon. So some tonight, some overnight and then some again available probably tomorrow afternoon and at about a 30-40% chance lingering into Sunday and still a mix of sun and cloud for Monday. This map is probably making it out a bit more than it is. Certainly from Vegreville through Elk Point, uh, Cold Lake proper and into maybe Pierce Land and out at Isle Across, we're seeing it as a possibility. And again, it's just showers, all right? So no reason not to say, well, we'll pack the cooler and, and head off to the campground probably tomorrow. Let's go across the country, 16 in Vancouver, 17 in Overcast as well in Edmonton, 17 in Regina. And let's look at the color of the map here. Lots of warmth available, 20 there in Winnipeg, variably overcast, yes, but... Uh, Pretty good going for this time of year as we head to Toronto a little cooler after some of the hot temperatures they had earlier on in the week there on the cool side of things now. 13 in Quebec too, 11 in Halifax and 7 in St. John's with some showers there too. So let's come on back to the Battlefords as we get into the holiday weekend sitting at 20 at the moment. Some of the cloud cover in Alberta pushing in to Saskatchewan in this hour. The winds still strong out of the south getting up to about 30 kilometers per hour and it certainly allowed that to warmth to, to build on in as we start off the holiday weekend. Could see five on the overnight. Southeasterly winds 15 to 25 kilometers per hour. We'll give it a 30 percent chance. Some of it may be tracking through cut knife, uh, lash burn areas, Maidstone, and then probably coming into the Battlefords proper before tapering off towards Prince Albert. 20 is what you're aiming for tomorrow with a 30 percent chance of again seeing some showers around winds west and northwest anywhere from 10 to 20 kilometers per hour. Cold Lake and area and this is a good example of what has gone on getting up to 20 and then in the last hour temperatures falling back with some quick showers rumbling on through there. So sitting at 14 at the moment and the sun fighting back out again. So quick over the space of an hour then it's all done back to to business as usual then yeah pretty much six on the overnight still running a 40 percent chance and a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow aiming for a daytime high of 21 winds west 10 to 20 kilometers per hour so certainly no reason not to make it out to the provincial campground and enjoy the, the lakes and whatever warmth is available 19 we're sitting at at the moment looks like that'll be our daytime high seven on the overnights there's that 30 40 percent chance and the risk of a thunder shower around but certainly no reason not to enjoy the outdoors 30 percent at various points tomorrow aiming for 19 or even 20 with a little luck and behind that trough line winds switching and coming out of the northwest we've been enjoying south and southwest winds for the better part of the day 19 tomorrow 19 sunday again trace amounts at 30 percent and the holiday victoria day proper Maybe 21, winds light at times, maybe even under 5 kilometers per hour. 22 on Tuesday, 23 Wednesday, 16 Thursday, 10 for Friday. And again, the bulk of it honestly looks like maybe next Thursday. Too far away yet to put a hard handle on it, but certainly for this holiday weekend, doing very well. That's a look at the next seven days. We've got agriculture news coming up. John Deere Z-Track Z345R with the Excel Deep Deck to mow faster, better. Visit Eggland Lloyd St. Paul or Vermillion today. Solutions from the ground up. Both Lloydminster Liners U16 teams have the benefit of playing in two leagues this summer and it's becoming clear the added play is benefiting the girls game. Lance Phillips was at Legion Park Wednesday. The U16A team hoping to improve its record in ladies league play. Lloydminster's U16A liners squad proved to be too much for Onion Lake Thursday, blanking the Diamonds 7-0. 
Offensively, the girls have improved immensely with Alex Kalanoka leading the way. Batting was really good. We, uh, you know, sizing up the ball and uh, taking a look at it and, uh, you know, getting the good hits on them. And we've had some girls that were struggling and it was good for them to, to actually break out of that finally. So it was good. I felt that I did quite well, hitting well, making plays. Thursday's win showed improvement in other areas of the girls' game and it's providing optimism. Optimism that a berth in nationals is becoming a real possibility. Pitching, pitching is all good. I uh, had pretty good pitch counts, a lot of strikeouts. Um, yeah, really good. Our hits are better, stronger. Our throws are getting way better, more on target. Just everything's improving lots. The season is still very early, but everyone's impressed with the same facet of their game, an area that's helping them earn wins. That this is probably one of the best teams I've ever been with. We've really come together as a team. We've been doing workouts together, and it's just really been bringing us together as a whole. I'm going to say the teamwork uh, is getting better. The girls are finding their spots. They're trusting each other with, uh, with their throws and the receiving part of it. So they're getting that piece to, uh, down pack, um, you know, finally li lining up some positions with some certain girls and uh, solidifying that. It's been coming together good. Lance Phillips, Newcap Sports, Lloydminster.